I am delighted to be here at this 1312 Congress on Diabetes India. It's an environment of science and unmatched hospitality. I'm thankful to Dr. S. R. Arvind for dedicated president, Dr. Bansi Sabu, the dynamic and versatile secretary, Dr. Manoj Chavla, a great scientific chairman, Dr. Sunil M. Jain, our organizing chairman, and 24 into 7, Dr. Bharat Sabu, organizer. So the topic which I have selected for this talk is how to live till 100 years without acute myocardial infarction or heart attack. You must have heard deliberations from leading diabetologists that diabetics can live till 100 years. What I am going to demystify is the signs how you can achieve this target. And in my personal opinion, living 100 years without heart attack is much easier than a diabetic living for 100 years. All of us know chronological aging is inevitable in the long run. Biological aging is different because it represents how much your body has aged over the years. And biological aging can be postponed, longevity increase, your biological age may be much less than your chronological age. So like chronological aging, ACVD is inevitable in the long run, but ACVD like AMI can be postponed. So first, let's see why we are so much interested in this topic. The conventional reason is the deadly disease. 25% die before reaching the hospital. In hospital and first year mortality has been slashed down. But more important reason is this, which we are seeing every day. Premature CAD in India has become a new established entity. 30% of heart attack are below the age of 40 years. And time and again, you must be hearing a celebrity who has died of acute myocardial infarction. Some of them even failed to reach the hospital. And many unknown persons die every day, and we are not aware of that. But still, most distressing reason is this. That's why we are so much interested. That every month, we see one or two patients between 20 to 30 years and this is one of the examples you can see, a 23-year-old male, second Indian engineering student, seek consultation with the physician for retrosternal burning of two hours duration. Electrocardiogram shows changes of ACS. He developed cardiac arrest in OVD, revived and sent to the cath lab, and you can see the left anterior descending artery is totally occluded. Angioplasty done, flow restored, Electrocardiogram virtually reverted to normal and is doing well, ejection fraction near normal. The second case is, so the big question now in our country is, at what age prevention of ACVD and AMI should start in India? A very complex issue and still an unsought and unresolved issue. Case number two, female 41 years, Premenopausal, prolonged chest pain, ECG shows ST depression and multi-bleed, AVR, ST elevated, a suspicion of left main disease, angiogram done, you can see the left main is totally occluded, a very dangerous subset of CAD, patient would die unless his RT is opened, RT is opened and the patient survived. And look at the IVAS, full of atherosclerosis at 41 years in a female, another view, so much atherosclerosis is there. The video somehow is not working. So let's see how acute myocardial infarction develops. Video is not acute myocardial infarction develops due to disruption of a vulnerable plaque with superimposed thrombus formation. This thrombus occludes the artery and the flow to the affected segment is stopped and this results in myocardial necrosis. So when we are talking of how to postpone myocardial infarction, the crux of the matter is you must realize LDL is causally and causally related to atherosclerosis. 
and there is overwhelming evidence which all of us are aware of it. The second thing you must realize, the change which has happened is all levels, all levels of LDL are isogenic and I'll show why I'm talking of this. Now look at this. When we look at the science of the last 20 years or so in LDL lowering, what is the message? When we look at the issue, can we stabilize the plaque by LDL lowering? The answer is a big yes. Statin therapy, we have large data. Can we reduce the plaque buildup, which means can we reduce the arrest of progression of atherosclerosis? Answer is yes. Excellent data from reversal trial, high intensity darvastatin, arrested the progression of atherosclerosis. And this occurs when your LDL is less than 70. So all LDL levels above 70 are atherogenic. They will continue to. Can we regress the plaque? We just shrink the plaque. The answer is again yes. Data from the Glockop trial. You can even regress your atherosclerosis. And this occurs at an LDL level which is less than 50. So you can easily imagine our desirable goal is less than 50. Less than 70 if you want to arrest atherosclerosis. So even if you are living with an LDL of 100, 110, 100, which is usually considered normal, you may be having comparatively less atherogenic risk compared to the higher group, but certainly you are prone for myocardial infarction in the long run. And the final issue, can we make the plaque disappear? This is an unresolved issue at the present instant of time, but maybe this may become possible. So the big message is LDL levels 100 to 130 which are generally regarded as normal are also risk at AMI. So the guideline ESCUC low risk 116, lipid association 100. You are still at risk of developing MI because a risk of progression of atherosclerosis will only occur when you will stretch down your LDL to 70 otherwise in the long end. We'll see how these numbers uh, help in assessing your age of development of myocardial infarction. Now this is a very interesting slide, data for cumulative exposure of LDL from familial hypercholesteremia, which is very interesting. So you can see if you are a patient of uh, uh, familial hypercholesteremia homozygous, which means your LDL is more than 500, here it is 560, you will develop acute myocardial infarction at the age of 12.5 years. If you are a patient of heterozygous FH, LDL is more than 200 and then you will develop myocardial infarction at the age of 53. But if you start even low dose statin 10 milligram at the age of 10 years, the myocardial infarction will develop uh, at the much later date compared even if you start high intensity statin even at the age of 20 years. So cumulative exposure of LDL is very important but if you are a person who doesn't have FH, your LDL is 127, you will develop myocardial infarction at the age of 55 years. I will further elaborate this. So we are now very clear that acute myocardial infarction only develops when the cumulative exposure of LDL cholesterol to the vessel wall reaches the threshold target of 7000 mg per year. So unless you reach this target, you will not develop clinical coronary heart disease, which could be acute myocardial sudden death or angina. So let us first try to demystify these simple terms. Cumulative LDL burden means circulating LDL in milligram per deciliter in two years of exposure and CH threshold means 7000 milligram per year and CHD threshold means age when the cumulative LDL burden reaches level at which causes clinical coronary heart disease. So preventing LDL to reach the threshold target is a very effective solution to prevent acute myocardial infarction. The last couple of years has witnessed exciting uh, developments in this field both in terms of enhanced understanding and in the availability of a panoply of newer therapeutic options. The most exciting development is gene editing with CRISPR technology by which in a single setting you can uh, edit PCSK9 gene and your LDL 
is dropped to very low levels for the rest of the life. The first successful patient is already run in New Zealand and the hard one trial is ongoing and the credit for this innovation goes to these uh, two ladies which we are proud of and they are the Nobel Prize winners in 2020 and this is going to be the future of cardiology in the next decade or so. So by gene editing you can slash down the LDL to very low levels for the rest of the life. The other options are statins, which we will discuss in Clisran and PCSK9 monoclonal. Now, this again, suppose you reduce your LDL level even at age 30 to uh, 70. You reduce your LDL is 100, you will develop acute myocardial infarction at the age of 70. If you reduce your LDL level even at age 30 to 70, you will develop myocardial infarction at 100 years and your LDL is still lower, less than 70, it may be still later on. But one thing you have to remember that this threshold may be decreased by certain factors which should abide the S factor, which is saturated fat, salt, sugar, smoking, stress, sleeplessness and sedentary life, which you have to avoid. So statins are very cost-effective drugs, but you have to take it daily over the period of time, some early age, say 20s or so, and they are very useful. You can easily slash down the LDL to less than 70. PCSK9 are magic bullets, but every 14 day or every one month is cumbersome and not practicable. But Inclisran is emerging as an excellent modality to prevent MI, Single injection of 300 milligram decreases LDL to 50% and this remains there for the next six months. Even if you use one PCS, uh, one Inclusan injection uh, for several years, the LDL will be dropped to less than 40% below the baseline. Here you can see. So the blue lines, single injection, 300 milligram, LDL is decreased by 50%. But even if you see at the end of one year, it is 20% below the line. The half-life of Inclisan is more than 300. So after few injections, it will be 40% below the baseline. The drug is already available in UK, also approved by FDA, may be available in India next year. And this concept that if LDL can be practically reduced to less than 70 on a population-wide space with postponed development of MI by several years, is being tested in UK in a trial. What are the evolving therapies? PCSK9 vaccine is an excellent evolving therapy. The human studies are being done. And the single vaccine decreased LDL by 50%. This remains there for the one year. And if this comes out to be successful, a booster dose every year would be a new way to treat atherosclerosis. And as I already told you, gene editing emerged as a revolutionary therapy and you can I'll show you the video with one sitting you can slash down your LDL to 30 40 which remains there for the rest of the life and this CRISPR technology has two component the CRISPR system has a guided RNA and the Cas9 protein the guided RNA identifies the gene and the Cas9 cuts that gene you will see in the video the guided RNA will identify gene, it is identified and you can see the Cas9 will cut that gene, is already cut and when this heals up, the gene which is there loses its function. So the PCSK9 will lose its function and you will have lifelong uh, loss of function mutation of PCSK9. So for a practical approach, uh, we gave a mobile number for preventing MI. And what is this mobile number? 1308070. 130 by 80 stands for blood pressure. Less than 70 is for LDL. This is for whole life. HbA1c7 and 0 for smoking. So in a very simplistic term, if you adopt this number, you will be able to live long, maybe 100 years without, because if you slash down your LDL to less than 70, atherosclerosis would not progress. The idea is being uh, studied around the globe, and this is a comment by no other person but Dr. Braunwald, the father of cardiology. How to live 100 years before developing clinical coronary artery disease is a suggestion from no other person but Eugene Braunwald. 
In the very interesting article, dyslipidemia over lifetime. Now we are interested in dyslipidemia lifetime, the cumulative exposure and not what is your LDL level. Mere LDL levels does not tell you your cumulative exposure. The number of years for which the LDL level is more important. So today we talk of dyslipidemia over lifetime, the cumulative exposure, and this is the strategy for postponing myocardial infarction. The other issue is what is the simplest way you are prone for heart attack? The simplest way you can perform with your sexual partner, your endothelial function is very good, you are not likely to develop heart attack, sexual health is an indicator of good endothelial function and sexual health is an integral part of total health, total health cannot be achieved without sexual health. But unfortunately this digital intoxication is killing the sexual health and our people are busy in smartphone, WhatsApp, Google, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat and Tinder. And our suggestion is do digital fasting and not the conventional fasting for detoxification at least once in 15 days or at least preferably once in a while. But this is killing the lifestyle and the sexual health. So we have excellent modalities for treatment of acute myocardial infarction. You have lifestyle modification, PCI, OMT, CABG, but all these modality, no doubt they decrease morbidity and mortality, but do not decrease the number of acute myocardial infarctions. So our aim is to build heart attack free India, stop heart attack, stop heart attack, and this heart attack can only be started, stopped by primordial prevention, the concept of cumulative exposure, or you target the young nursery kids it is seen by studies that if you adopt lifestyle modification right from the nursery age, they continue to follow up for a long time and the incident of non-communicable diseases decrease. Data from the familial state, data from the Valentin Foster from Spain, all this have shown that it does. So conquering this possible should be our destination. And living up to 100 years without MI is a possible task based on current science. If you lower your LDL less than 70 throughout your life, the task can be easily achieved. If all of us follow the current science from early age of 20 or so, it will enable our hearts to beat without blockages for 100 years, keep your LDL less than 70 for the rest of life, and remain free from myocardial infarction. Thank you very much for your kind attention.